A House in the Sky is the name of the book. Amanda Linto is the author, best-selling book. Welcome to BT. Thank you so much. It's great to be in Vancouver. It's great to have you here. And this is a well-documented story of what took place, in case somebody's watching and don't uh, doesn't know the story. 2008, freelance reporter for you in Somalia, kidnapped, captive for 15 months. Mm -hmm. Outside looking in for something like this, is it cathartic to put pen to paper with words, or is it uh, more traumatic to relive it? No, I mean, it was really cathartic. So it took three and a half years for my co-author and I to pen this story. And so I took my time with it because it was a difficult story to tell. I needed to access some particularly difficult and traumatic memories in order to to produce a house in the sky, but it ultimately was a really healing experience for me to just go through the process from beginning to end, the story from beginning to end, and it was like a way of closing that chapter of my life in a way. It's yeah. really a story of strength and survival, looking at what you endured, 460 days in captivity. Take us through the idea of the day you were kidnapped, mm -hmm. when you realized you were in grave danger. Well, I wouldn't say that it happened the day that I was kidnapped, because the day that I was kidnapped, I, I, I was thinking maybe it was a robbery, maybe this would be over quickly. It was really once the people who abducted me demanded a ransom from my family, which happened about a week later, that I understood this was not going to be over quickly. And it was 460 days in Somalia in captivity until my family was able to fund raise, remortgage their houses, etc., to pay this ransom demand. Where does the mind go? For the days of darkness, the days of uncertainty, thinking this could be it for you? I know you documented in the book, but where does the mind go when you're sitting there? Well, I named the book A House in the Sky because that was my mental process. I went to this place, what I refer to as my house in the sky. A place in my own mind that, that was memory and imagination that I could access when things were really the worst. A place that I could still hope and dream and think about the life that I hoped to go on to live if I made it out of there. You have a great deal of courage to come out here in what seems to be effortless to tell this story and I can only imagine how difficult it is to, to, to relive this and, and tell this but there's a lot of learning lessons from mm -hmm. what you went through and the complexities of the compassion for your, for your captors in this situation. As I understand it, one of the captors reached out to you on Facebook. I know anybody can contact you on Facebook. I received a message a couple of years ago. It was about a year and a half after I'd been out of captivity. And I received a Facebook message from one of the leaders of, of um, the kidnapping who was writing me to congratulate me on the good work that I'm doing through the nonprofit organization that I've created after I returned home to help the people in Somalia. And so, for me, receiving that message, obviously very upsetting. I didn't respond to it, but there's a sort of justice in that. Like my captors know what I have gone on to do with my life on the other side, and they can see that I have chosen compassion over hatred. And uh, I find a lot of comfort in that. That is amazing that you can get to that place because you know if we look at what is happening in news today with ISIS and the James Foley story oh. comes to mind. Looking at how these things are relayed, the images, the videos, do you think it's important that we see these things or do you think it's fueling the propaganda of extremists? I think it's fueling the propaganda of extremists. I mean, I know in my case with my kidnappers, they they monitored the internet very, very closely. And I think ISIS, by putting these videos out, they want people to see it. They want people to share it. They, they're they looking for the headlines. And I mean, this hits really close to home for me because in my experience in captivity, I too was taken out to to the desert and had a knife held to my neck and I lived through that. Um, I've been in touch with James Foley's family over the last couple of years as his mom was trying to fundraise to raise money for him and so when these headlines have come out it really triggers my, my own post-traumatic stress disorder and it's I mean it's, it's really upsetting. This lesson of forgiveness and, and the place you're at today, which is a positive one, this story's been commissioned to be a movie. You've got the Global Enrichment Foundation mm -hmm. still traveling, still giving back. Yeah. You've been back to Somalia. What's the most important takeaway for you of how you look at the world now? Well, I talk a lot about forgiveness. And when you've gone through such enormous trauma like I have, it's really the only way to move your life forward, I think. You, you have to find a way to let go of the accumulation of negative emotion that builds up inside of you. Like, of, of, of course, there's a lot of that. 
that. Like, I'm still confused. I'm still angry. There's a lot of regret. There's all those emotions. But I find through the practice of forgiveness, and it is a practice, it's something that I do literally every single day in the morning before I even get out of bed, I make the choice to forgive and move my life forward. And, and through the choice to do that, I've been able to do things like start the Global Enrichment Foundation, which works in the country where I was like once held captive for 460 days. Which is phenomenal that you live without fear given all of these things that take place. How do you even get to that point of not even fearing the idea of traveling and going well, back Well, I do feel fear. It's just a matter of moving past the fear. You know, it's, it's like... I have to assess whether the fear is valid or not. Going into a country like Somalia, it's still a very dangerous place, and I go with lots of security and protection that I didn't have in 2008 when I was kidnapped. Um, I'm older and wiser now, so you know I do things a little bit differently, but there's still fear involved, but I don't want to let that fear, which comes from that experience in Somalia, to define me. A lot of great left, uh, life lessons coming out of this book. A House in the Sky is the name of it. If you haven't read it, definitely pick it up. Thanks for sharing your Thank story, you Amanda. Thank you so much.